Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. Get ready, get ready to experience the majestic glory of God. You, I mean, I mean you. Sid Roth has spent over 40 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm here with Keith Miller. Keith was raised in a, a, a non-Christian, a nothing home. He had no foundation and no interest in Jesus. Well, he found himself married and his wife critically ill. He's driving his car. He thinks he's alone. But he's not. What happened? Well, I started praying because we had received bad news from my wife and that she had a disease that could not be cured. There was no cure for it. And at that time, I mean, my wife and my boys were the most important thing to me. So why did you pray? I, you know, that's kind of crazy. I didn't know really a reason why. I just knew to pray, and I just said a simple prayer. I just went, hey, God, how about healing my wife? That's simple. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, but what happened next was amazing because I heard audibly, okay, I will. And it just I un, bet un, you were scared. Uh, I, I actually slammed on the brakes, pulled over on the side of the highway, jumped out of my pickup, and looked around. And went, I had an extended <laughs> cab. I wanted to see if somebody was in the back. Nobody there. I was shaking, got back in, and then I heard this statement, but where am I the rest of the time in your life? And at that point, I just began to see my life, how hurt and bitter and empty I was, and I just began to cry and hadn't cried in years and cried all the way home. Got home, called my wife. She was already at the doctor to go in for treatments. Called her at the doctor, got her on the phone. I say, babe, what's going on? She said, you're not going to believe it. They said it was a mistake. I'm just fine. And so I right there hung up the phone, fell down on my knees and said, okay, Jesus, I don't know how to do this thing, but if you're real, here I am. I give you my life. And I got born again. And then shortly thereafter, you got a little bit more. I did. I opened up the scripture, and one of the things I read about was uh, somebody named Holy Spirit. Now, when you asked to be filled with the Holy Spirit, did you have any sort of experience? I did. It was amazing. And it was so awesome, I didn't raise my voice. I talked in a soft whisper for three weeks after that because it was such a profound encounter. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to lose what I had received. So, in 1994, you're minding your own business, watching television, and you saw something that really attracted you. I did, because during that time when I received the Holy Spirit, I had reoccurring visions, and one of the things I kept seeing myself was praying for the sick. And I didn't have anything uh, for that. I mean, I just saw myself praying for the sick. And these are just from the early days of when I'm raw, first born again. And so several years passed, and I had not seen that. And so I'm watching TV, and I see this little boy. I'll never forget, because this little boy said, the, they made fun of me at school. They laughed at me because I couldn't run. But look, God just healed me. And he went running across the platform, and the mom was crying, the dad was crying, the minister was crying, and I was crying. I was going, that's what I want right there, Lord. And then shortly thereafter, uh, you found yourself in the back of a church, and you had a God encounter. I did. It was amazing. I actually said, Lord, I come for an impartation. I want the anointing. And I had said, you know, I want to see, uh, I'm tired of people coming to the altar and leaving the same way they came. I, I, we see people respond, but they leave the same way they come. Something's got to change. You promise, promise this power in Acts 1-8. I want that power, precious Lord. And all of a sudden, I felt, first of all, somebody touched the back of my neck. I said, what? And I turned around, but I was in the last row. There was nobody behind me. So I immediately closed my eyes, and all of a sudden, it just like a drenching of oil came upon me, and I knew the Lord had granted me an anointing of the Holy Spirit. And after this impartation of oil, everything dramatically changed. 
Uh, tell me about an area you went to in Albuquerque, New Mexico, called the War Zone. That's right, yes. They invited me to come into this little church, had a real small congregation in what they call the War Zone. In fact, the pastor actually carried a gun with him because he had had several people killed in his parking lot. So I went there and started preaching and ministering, and the Lord I literally healed this man. It was amazing because the man had been in this head-on collision, literally crushed one whole side of his face, and he literally hit the floor, let out a sound, and when he jumped up, he was completely, his face had been completely rearranged, and he was completely 100% healed. Uh, for some reason, a lot of New Agers are in that area yes. of the, the country, and they came to your meetings. What they effect did. did it have on them? It did, because they heard of the signs and wonders. It was a draw. And so, when they heard about the different people that were being healed and so forth, one of the main teachers came. And when I prayed for her, she hit the floor and, and was completely set free, stood her up, led her to Jesus, and she got wonderfully born again. Did that have an impact in other New Agers? It did. She Every night, it was amazing because the meetings were growing and growing and growing. And I was thinking, where these people come from? Well, she had went back and she started inviting all her classes every night to come. In fact, I, even after the revival stopped for five years, she taught Bible there in the New Age community, leading people to Jesus. Uh, I still to this day, 30 years later, pinch myself because of the goodness of God. It's like the best of the best. And what he did in my life, even receiving the anointing, I realized that uh, wasn't it, it wasn't who I was, but it's who he is. And as the Bible said, he's no respecter of people. He can do the same thing for anyone. Well, Keith received a revelation from God through three supernatural encounters. But it wasn't just for him. You see, God commissioned him to release it to you. Next. For He Himself is our peace, who has made both Jew and Gentile into one, and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall. His purpose was to create in Himself. To create in Himself. His purpose was to create one new man. One new man. One new man. Adim novi chlaviak. The Adam Hadash Echad. One new man. We now return to It's Supernatural. Uh, so Keith is operating in what I consider a major miracle, strong anointing. And one day God speaks to you. Was it audible or in your spirit? What did he say? Well, it's interesting because the Lord had started creating a deep hunger within me before when I won the anointing when I saw on TV. That was out of desperation. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see people change and transform as what the Scripture said. Just like anybody that's watching right now, he's no respecter of person. Maybe your heart's filled with wanting to see signs, wonders, and miracles. You can receive that anointing right now. You can just ask, just like I did, right there in my front room for that anointing, and he'll do it. Uh, but, lead, lead a prayer right okay, now. Okay, yeah, I just want to, I felt that. Father, I just pray for that person right now. Father, I thank you that there's no distance between me, you, and them right now. And I thank you for that fresh oil. I thank you for that anointing from the head to toes, toes to head, that anointing to bring honor and glory to Jesus, that he's the same today, he'll be the same tomorrow, and he'll be the same the next day. And he's still doing miracles. He's still setting people free. He's still healing. And I thank you right now for that kind of anointing to be poured out for that one watching right now. Praise be to the Lord. Just receive that in faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Amen. You provoke me to jealousy, Keith, <laughs> okay. because uh, he hasn't had one angelic visitation. He hasn't had two angelic visitations, but he's had three major angelic visitations. Tell me about the first one. Well, it started with uh, the Lord asked me a question because uh, I was hungry, uh, and it was a different kind of hunger. It wasn't desperation. It was a supernatural hunger that the Lord initiated. And he actually said to me, do you want to know the Holy Spirit like I know Him? Of course, that caused me to say, well, how do you know Him? I dived into Scripture and started going into the Scripture and studying everything there was. And so, I'm in a revival meeting, 
And during worship, I'm caught up in this encounter, and I see this busting, big, huge angel in the vision. Now, I'm not used to these type of visions. I'm going, what is going on? And all of a sudden, he says, open your mouth, and he threw this book, like scroll thing to me, and I ate that scroll book. And I sat down, and even my staff and my wife said, what just happened to you? I said, I ate a book or something. And so, that was the first encounter. Of course, immediately I went into the Scripture to see, what is this? What's taking place? And then um, the next encounter was, I get up early in the morning and felt to go to the office. I walk into the front door, into the foyer of our office, and we have a long hallway, and the office is filled with the tangible, fiery, electrical presence of the Lord. I kicked off my shoes. Now, by the way, as you're speaking, yeah. I can feel it. It's almost like you relive it yes, that's when you right. say it, but yes. you relive it experientially. But go ahead. That's right. And as I'm walking, I look down the hallway, and there the big angel was, not in a vision. I wasn't having a vision. He was there. Now, you think I'd say, cool. No, no, I was undone. I mean, I was shaking. I dove into my office. and I, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. I have to ask you something. What did he look like? Did he look like a real person? Was he? Could you see through the angel? What? No, I couldn't see through him. He was he looked like a person, but he was extremely huge. Like. Uh, he was probably at least seven to eight foot tall, really strong in his physique. But That's all, a little intimidating. It, well, not only that, he exerted authority. Mm. It wasn't just his size, but and, and what was he didn't have a look like, hi, how you doing? He had his arms crossed just like that, looked at me like that. It, it was undoing. I, I mean, it wasn't like, oh, wow, an angel. No, I, I dove into my uh, office and immediately went into a series of visions from the Holy Spirit about the counsel of God. And then after the Holy Excuse Spirit. Me, lifted, what's the counsel of God? Well, it, it, I had been praying, Lord, when I go into cities and regions, I don't want to just preach a message. I want to preach that builds the kingdom in that area, that group of people, so I need your counsel. And so I had been really asking for that. And when I was in my office, amazing, it was like the Lord pulled down these screens in heaven and I could see it. And He said, from this point on, you'll have my counsel. That's what He told me. And I asked the Holy Spirit, I felt the Holy Spirit lifted from me. And I said, what about the guy, what about the guy in the hallway? And he said, well, you need to see because he has names written on each shoulder and his legs. And so I'm sure all of heaven's laughing at me. It wasn't like, let me just check it out. I kind of peeked around the, the door to see if he's there. Sure enough, he's still there. And so I jumped out there and I looked at that angel, and sure enough, he had strength, stature, kingdom, dominion. And as soon as I saw the names, he was gone. But I knew that was an invitation to the Lord for me to begin to study what is the strength and stature. And what the Lord showed me what was coming, we, can, we could not and I could not facilitate this out of my own strength, out of my stature, to see kingdom dominion. And that's, so that began to begin to study the Scripture and ask be, tremendous impact on the strength of God in my life and how to live out of that strength and then, of course, to grow in the stature of Christ in me. And then after this set, I had already had a set of meetings set up to do a seven-day revival. Went to that meeting, and I said, okay, I'm going to ask for the counsel of God. It's one month later, so I lay out on the floor, and immediately I'm in the throne room. Now, when I'm in the throne room, uh, the Lord is just blazing white, blue, like that. My hair is just, whoo, my fibers of my being are literally like undone, if you would. It's just like, uh, I mean, I, first of all, I can't believe this is happening to me. And so the, the hand of the Lord come out, His right hand, and He had an envelope. And He handed that to the same angel. This is the third time I've seen this angel, same one. And He handed it to the angel, He handed it to me. And it was funny because I was shaking. I dropped the envelope. They, he picks it back up, hands it to me. And I open up the envelope. There's no letter in there. There's no piece of paper. It's living. And it has two passages of Scripture. And the two passages of Scripture are Revelation 4, 5 and Isaiah 11, 2. Which says? Well, from the throne proceedeth lightning, thunders, and voices. And around the throne are seven lamps, which are the seven spirits of God. Revelation 4, 5. And then Isaiah 11, 2 says, The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and and might, the spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. And that was the two passages. And what did that mean to you? 
Well, uh, at first I had no idea, but I know the next seven days meetings was some of the most incredible meetings. I was getting names of people in other states, uh, bar, titanium bars in people's back for disappearing, healings took place. It was amazing because of the encounter. So I started studying. I had no idea what these passages of scriptures meant. And I just, but as our identity as kings, the scripture says, we are to search out a matter, which means dive into the scripture. And immediately I began to study. And of course, that started the wonderful life study for me on the sevenfold flow of the Holy Spirit. And I had prayed and asked to know the Holy Spirit like Jesus knows him. And in Revelation 3 1, it actually says, Jesus has the seven spirits of God. Well, what is, if someone's filled with the Spirit, why is it necessary for them to understand the seven flows of the Holy Spirit? Great question, and it's for every believer. Well, the dynamics of the river are different than the gifts. We're grateful for the gifts, the power of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, but the rivers, according to Jesus, He said in John 7, 37, 38, that our out of our most innermost being shall flow these rivers of the Holy Spirit. The rivers is what Paul prayed in the apostolic prayers of Ephesians 1, 17. May the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So, each one is like a separate it's, river. It's perpetual. The gift's one time. It's the operation for that moment. But the river is perpetual, it's constant, and it's ever increasing. And it's for the believer's life, but not only for the believer's life, but also through the life, for the life, for the glory of the Lord. He wants to see the activity of those dynamic flows in every believer's life. He wants to see the well uncapped within, to see those rivers flowing. Are you ready for Keith's biggest revelation? I mean, the biggest of all. The majestic glory of God, and He's going to demonstrate and impart. Be right back. We've found over a thousand planets outside our solar system just in the last 20 years. There are at least 100 billion stars in the Milky Way alone, and at least 100 billion galaxies in the observable universe. There are more stars than grains of sand on all Earth's beaches combined. Up to 4,800 stars are born every second. There are 86 billion neurons in the average human brain. If you unraveled all the DNA in your body, it would span 34 billion miles, reaching to Pluto, 2.6 billion miles away and back six times. With 60,000 miles of blood vessels inside the average human body, you could circumnavigate Earth two and a half times. Nerve impulses travel to and from the brain at speeds of up to 250 miles per hour, faster than a Formula One race car. If the human brain were a computer, it could perform 38,000 trillion operations per second. The world's most powerful supercomputer can only manage 0.002% of that. Is all this creation a random coincidence? Or was the universe created by design? Is there a creator who has a plan for you? We would love to provide you with a powerful book that answers these questions and many more. Get a free online download of the book. They Thought for Themselves by logging on to the website theythoughtforthemselves.com. We now return to It's Supernatural. I have to tell you, Keith, I am thrilled over this next revelation you had about the majestic glory. Tell me how that happened. Yeah, I was uh, at a cowboy church up on a mountain actually preaching, and the Lord told me to stay the night there in that town because it was Rosh Hashanah, and I'm going to meet with him. Right at 4 a.m., I walked through the door, and as soon as I walked through the door, I heard the voice of the Lord, audible voice of the Lord, say, Welcome to the majestic glory. And immediately, I just, the, it's like the spans just opened up, and all of a sudden, I could just see the vastness of God, the magnificent. I was just over, I actually was so overwhelmed. I actually lost my breath for a moment. But for the next 90 minutes, I just saw scene after scene after scene. Right over here, I watched, he was showing me what it looked like when the angels were dispatched. I actually saw a myriad of angels, thousands of angels coming down. And over here, I actually saw the rolling glory. And I believe it was a majestic glory. It wasn't 
looked like just a cloud, but it was literally roar, rolling red, orange, beautiful. I mean, really, words don't adequately describe what happened. Then I saw four flashes, and it just went. Phew. Which I know Ezekiel 1 says those are like cherubim, the flashes like lightning. And I kept watching all these scenes. And then he be, I began to hear about the creativity of God, about how new writings are going to come forth, new innovations going to come forth, that new things are breaking through. And this is what a key thing, too, as Mark 6 2 it says of Jesus, that he moved with such wisdom with dunamis that mighty works were performed by his hand. And the Lord told me, I'm releasing, I'm looking for those who I can release power to with my wisdom to see those mighty works perform. And so I believe right now, even as people are watching, even in their homes, because the blood of Jesus made this available for every believer, it says in 2 Peter that actually when they heard the voice on the mountain, they described the voice as the majestic glory. It says that Jesus said, I'm, this day I'm going to set on the right hand side of majesty. In Psalms 145 verse 5 is a verse the Lord gave me. It says, I will meditate on the glorious splendor of His majesty. And that word there literally means set your mind, set your heart, ponder, chew, study everything you can about the majestic glory, because He wants to release His majestic glory in a great way. Jesus has now made this available to you. You have access to the majestic glory, who is the Father. You have access to the presence of the Father, His splendor, His magnificence, His excellence. And guess what it's going to release for you? The awe of God. When that presence of that tangible, weighty, majestic glory comes in, listen, what takes place is called awe. Oh my goodness! How mighty, how glorious, how awesome He is. It begins to transform you inward so you live out of the fullness of what Jesus Christ has done for you. So, I'm about to pray for you. It doesn't matter where you are. This wonderful blessing of the majestic glory, I believe you're going to literally have your front rooms, wherever you are, filled with His glory. Get ready. Father, Father, we thank You. You are the majestic one. You are majesty. And we thank You because of the precious and the holy and the glorious name of Jesus that we can now come into Your majestic glory. Oh, Lord, Father, Thank you for your glory to fill our homes, fill our lives. Let your glory be known through our life. Let your splendor, your glorious, your magnificence. And Father, we thank you that it's not a one time thing, but we abide in your majestic glory. So I take authority over every disease, every sickness. I take the authority over cancer. You are made whole now in the mighty name of Jesus. You are literally created created to thrive because of the presence of the Lord. And because you have access to the majestic glory, you will thrive, you will flourish, and every bit of sickness and disease must now go in the holy and mighty name of Jesus. I'm praying for you that are tired, a weariness, the forerunners, the trailblazers, the pioneers. Oh my goodness, I feel that anointing right now. I pray for His majestic glory to bring new strength, to revive, rejuvenate, repair. And one of the words for repair in Psalms 103 is to sharpen your sword. He's going to sharpen your cutting edge. New level, new level, new level. Everything goes to another level in the majestic glory of His presence. And thank you for activation of the sevenfold flow. Let those rivers flow in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Prayer is an essential part to access every one of God's promises and blessings for your life. And praying daily in your God-given prayer language is so important in light of the times we are living. Introducing the brand new Sid Roth God Talk app. With this new prayer app, you will be able to set a reminder for when you want to pray. 
Let others know the time you spent in prayer each day for accountability. Take advantage of our worldwide prayer app community to lift your prayer requests to God. It includes a video teaching on how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and how to effectively pray the supernatural language that God has given you on a daily basis. Watch our TV archives and ISN, our It's Supernatural Network, to build your faith to believe God for the impossible. The app is free and available for iPhone, iPad, or Android devices. Just go to your device's app store and search for Sid Roth's God Talk. The supernatural knows no bounds, and now there are no limits to equipping you to receive your supernatural breakthrough anytime, any place. ISN, the It's Supernatural online network, offers live streaming of programs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right on your mobile devices or smart TVs. I love that I can watch my favorite shows anytime I want. My workouts are out of the box, and so are my ISN podcasts. Download the free ISN app today. Next week on It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Kevin Zadai. I recently had a five and a half hour face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus. Join me on the next It's Supernatural with Sid Roth as I share how important it is to hear God's voice for yourself in this final hour and the other revelations that Jesus taught me. Your gifts to this ministry will help Sid air It's Supernatural in Israel 28 times a week and distribute his evangelistic book to the Jewish people worldwide. 